Here in Pennsylvania, severe weather can occur in many different forms. These types of weather can pose life-threatening consequences if the proper precautions are not taken. Each type of weather has different mitigation efforts that can be done to keep you and your loved ones safe. Today, we will be taking a look at tornadoes, severe thunderstorms, lightning, and flood safety, as well as addressing a few myths. A tornado is a violently rotating column of air in contact with the ground. The wind speeds inside a tornado range from under 100 miles an hour upwards of 300 miles an hour. Pennsylvania ranks among the top 30 for tornado occurrences in the United States, averaging 16 tornadoes per year. The topography of Pennsylvania can also play a role in where tornadoes more commonly occur. The biggest thing topography really does um, plays a lot with the role of what we call instability. Um, so if we get, you know, basically um, the mountains or, or higher terrain to block all that warm, moist air uh, feeding into a storm, uh, so if it blocks that off, that may inhibit, uh, you know, a better per tornado potential. When forecasting for tornadoes, the National Weather Service will issue either a watch or a warning. Yeah, if you hear a watch is out, it's really something where you just need to kind of keep in the back of your mind, you know, conditions are possible later on, you know, four warnings to be put out. And then, you know, if a warning is issued, that's where you actually take all that preparation, put it into place immediately at the time of, you know, get in, take, take your action at that point, get to your place of safety. When it comes to severe thunderstorms, they can produce a variety of life-threatening weather events ranging from tornadoes all the way over to hail. The National Weather Service has three main ingredients they look for when anticipating severe thunderstorms. And there's really three main ingredients for thunderstorms. So we need a source of lift uh, to produce the thunderstorms. We need instabilities, so basically warm, moist air um, coming in. And then, uh, of course, the moisture uh, source to create the, the clouds and, and thunderstorms. Um, and in particular, on a, a severe thunderstorm day, if we've got a lot of uh, what we call wind shear in the atmosphere, so uh, increasing wind speed, direction, uh, turning of the winds uh, allows the storms to organize. That's something we really look for. Severe thunderstorms can also spawn unique but violent bursts of wind such as downburst or derechos. While these are not as common as hail or lightning, they do occur frequently enough to be prepared for. A derecho is a widespread, long-lived straight-line windstorm that is associated with fast-moving group of severe thunderstorms. Winds in these events can potentially rival hurricane and even tornado force winds. Uh, we can get what you call a, a downburst, which is basically all the rain-cooled, uh, dense air from a thunderstorm spreading down to the ground, rushing downward and spreading out. Uh, you know, those can occur well over 100 miles an hour uh, at the peak of their intensity and damage. In the past decade, there were 275 lightning deaths in the United States. Lightning kills an average of 20 people per year in this country, and hundreds more are severely injured. Contrary to belief, most of these deaths come as no precipitation is falling. The anvil portion of a thunderstorm, or the top layer that kind of flattens out uh, way high in the atmosphere, uh, looks kind of like a flat white pancake, if you will, as the storm passes. So there's often times where you'll see that trailing and the rain's all out ahead of you, so you think you're safe, um, you know, people go back outside, and then you can actually get uh, isolated strikes out of the back of that, which are extremely dangerous. Uh, so that's where we get a lot of our um, unfortunate lightning fatalities. It's not before or during the storm, because obviously you see the rain, uh, hear the thunder, lightning, and you're inside. It's uh, the after portion. There is no safe place outside when lightning moves into the area. When you hear thunder, lightning is close enough to strike. When stuck outside during a lightning event, immediately get off elevated areas such as hills, mountain ridges, or peaks. Never lie on a flat ground or shelter under an isolated tree. And always remember, when thunder roars, head indoors. Thunderstorms can also lead to our next type of severe weather known as flash flooding and river flooding, which can impact the entire state. Sure, and flash flooding uh, can really happen anywhere. Uh, overall, it's going to be most common in uh, urban areas or areas where water, and the, the rain can't soak into the ground as well. Uh, so what we really look for there is rainfall rates. So if we're looking at uh, you know persistent heavy rainfall, it's certainly going to be a, an indicator for flash flooding. And then if we get what we call training storms, so you can get heavy rain or maybe even a little lighter, maybe moderate type rain. But if you get numerous rounds of it or numerous storms over the same area, uh, one after another, or maybe a thunderstorm that's just not moving in the summer, as we know we get slow moving, uh, kind of the uh, 
weaker type storms in the summer, but if they're just putting down rain over the same area, you know, hour after hour, it's going to be a issue there. Uh, so again, anywhere, um, especially urban areas or services where we can't uh, see the water soaking as well. And then where we see storms just persist or uh, dump copious amounts of rainfall at once. River flooding is also relatively common in Pennsylvania. Uh, so essentially where we get, uh, you know, rainfall or snow melt that basically creates slower rises on rivers uh, or tributaries, creeks and streams. So a lot of times it happens in the later part of the winter and the early spring where the ground still uh, frost, um, still pretty prevalent. So again, water can't soak in as well. And uh, rainfall that occurs or snow melts going to turn into what we call runoff and basically not soak into the ground, but just kind of stay on the surface and, and flow off. But kind of at this point, as we start to green up, uh, vegetation becomes more prominent. We'll, we'll get out of that threat. To it is also important to note that river flooding can occur from training thunderstorms, tropical systems, and just about anything else that will rapidly drop lots of rain in a short period of time. With severe weather season upon us, Jonathan Gooseman wanted to leave us with this piece of advice. Really get your plan in place, your preparedness uh, plan, what to do, where your family is going to be. So, you know, it's one of those that's not going to happen uh, by and large uh, often to everyone. But uh, when it does, it just it's make, it's makes things a lot less hectic and uh, and easier to deal with at that time if it does happen. For Weather World, I'm student meteorologist Joe Rook.